got the temperature just right to pitch our yeast, but before you pitch your yeast, we need to get a hydrometer reading for our specific gravity. This gravity here is the original gravity, and then after the beer is fermented, we'll take the final gravity. A little bit of a calculation will tell us our alcohol content. So you've got the, the tube, the test tube, and you just need to crack the tap. But before you do, you need to take the airlock out because you'll suck some of that water from the airlock back into the fermenter. So now fill up that test tube about two thirds of the way full. Yep. Okay, we've filled up the tube. Now we drop the hydrometer in. And just to get the air bubbles off, because that will affect the reading, you give it a spin, let it drop, and then we come and take a reading. You can see I've just tasted the cold wort pre-fermentation. I do this, it's one of those little habits that I've picked up along the way, because I've found if I don't like it here, the chances of me liking it down the, the finished product end are going to be, you know, if I don't like it here, what's the point in drinking it down that way? So you can get a lot of your taste profiles here, though the yeast and the whole fermentation process will change some of those flavour profiles, this will give you your, your bare bones, your, your bitterness um, and that malt flavour. Now, the basic kit in kilos have always said sprinkle your freeze-dried yeast on the top, seal it up, and away we go. There's nothing wrong with that, but we will show you better ways of preparing your yeast, because at the end of the day, the yeast is one of the main things that will help your beer improve flavour, but also make your beer drinkable. So Marlon, give it a pitch, just a light sprinkle around. Beautiful. Now, that yeast hydrates, absorbs the moisture and hydrates. We have the sugars that they can start feeding on and we have the right temperature. So we need to keep this fermenter between about 21 and 27 degrees. If it gets a little bit too cool, you need a heat pad or a heat belt. We'll show you those in future episodes. If you don't know anyone that's into home brewing, you've got a group of mates, you're thinking about getting started, read the instructions. They are quite useful. They do give you some hints and tips. Altering the temperatures will give you different flavours and different styles of beer. And most importantly, this does give you the formula to work out your final alcohol content. So that original gravity and the final gravity that we'll take after fermentation. Also, if you want some more hints and tips, visit your local homebrew shop or even join a homebrew club. They've got lots of experienced people there that can give you all the right advice. We're here with our veteran brewer, Alan. So Alan, tell us, how long have you been brewing for? Oh, I've been brewing for since the late 1960s, wow. which I started off with a makeup kit. So was it easy to get, get hold of information and ingredients? Yeah, you could buy the ingredients at Coles or Woolworths, but um, an, un an uncle in law, he, uh, Arthur Hargraves, people that come from Kew would remember him as the proprietor of the Kew Hotel. Oh, okay. And then later on, the Mundaring Hotel would. He had plenty of beer, but he actually brewed his own. Huh. And um, he showed me the ropes, and um, I started making it for quite a lot of years. Oh, fantastic! Absolutely fantastic. Um, so going back, going back all those years, you've probably encountered a lot of the um, a lot of the problems that, that home brewers have faced over the over the years. So. Yes, the main problem I think is not leaving the brew in the drum long enough. Yep. And. Um, that causes a lot of problems. It did for me because I was storing the beer in the uh, laundry. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, I heard a lot of sounds like sounded like hand grenades going off, <laughs> and it was a terrific mess. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah. then the next brew, I had to put out the side of the house. So um, I learned my lesson the hard way. 
any interesting stories for, for some of those first time brewers or maybe a lot of the seasoned brewers like yourself? I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've all got some, some funny stories. Yeah, well, <coughs> the brew I made up was all, um, is not in a kit the same as it is today. Um, you had to buy the hops. I had IXL hops, Buns hops, okay. um, uh, yeast extract, and um, brown and light brown, light brown and dark brown sugar, and you mixed it all together in a five-gallon rubbish bin. Oh, okay. It's very unhygienic, <laughs> especially when one day I had it on the floor of the kitchen, skimming the top froth off. Yep. And the cat decided to have a look, and it fell in. <laughs> first and my wife said surely you're not going to drink that I said well it fell in head first not the other end <laughs> so you drank it yeah so but um, no it was um, very different then so much, <laughs> so much very unhygienic <laughs> there we go well we um Talking a lot about adjuncts in the um, the course of the series, but I don't think cats will make an appearance ever again. I think Alan's um, tried and tried and won with that one. <laughs> so. Yeah, but, um, but now it's so simple. But as long as you follow the rules. Yep, you you'll say so you like it better brewing now because you're yeah. still you're still brewing today. Yeah. Um, and this one's this one's a nice drop. Um, so you find it a lot easier now. Oh, there's nothing to it now. There's no challenge, really. <laughs> yes, but I've been making um, the new kits since about nine, uh, 1990, uh, 2000, sorry. Yep. And um, they've, they haven't always turned out all right, but um, it's a lot easier than it used to be. Great, great, yep. And um, I guess over the years you've probably certainly seen a... Um, a saving, the oh, home yes. brewing. That's that's what originally put me onto home brewing. Yes, um, well, I went back in two thousand. The price then per sixty stubbies hasn't changed much within a few dollars. Yeah, yeah. I think the caps have gone up for about um, twenty cents a hundred, okay. and, and the brew might have gone up at two or three dollars. But that's it. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Yeah. So still paying around the twenty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. The, and it's well worth it. It's very yeah. satisfying. Yeah to drink your own beer and um, certainly works out about 25 cents for a stubby. So. Yep, fantastic. There you go. All right, Alan, thanks very much for, for joining the brewery crew. You're officially number one and the, um, the seasoned <laughs> veteran. You've got a lot more years than all of us put together. And viewers, this is, this is what we're doing with this show. We're bringing in experienced people who have been doing it for a long time and don't worry, there's plenty for the advanced brewers out there as well. We'll be talking to a lot of professional brewers. So if you really want to get into the technical stuff, there's something in it for you. We're about to pop in to visit a good friend of mine, the professor, to check out his brand new bar. There's a refreshing drink of Three Rivers Craft Beer for you. Well, with all the effort that I go to in terms of making my beer and taking all that time, I figured that I had to have a fairly decent bar to serve the beer from. So welcome to what's currently the Three Rivers Bar. Um, this also will probably grow when we open the proper brewery as well, but for now, this is my home bar. Um, and yeah, welcome to Three Rivers and cheers. Uh, recently, or a couple of years ago now, had some Jarrah flooring laid. Uh, ended up with a heap of floorboards left over. Thought, oh, what can I do with my floorboards? And um, this is what the bar is. So this is made out of um, Jarrah tongue and groove flooring that was left over from a big flooring job that we did. Um, it's got, um, we have two wine fridges built into the front of it. So we've got a red wine fridge and a white wine fridge. Uh, and then over here we have my three keg kegerator. Uh, and I can tell you what all what kegerators are, but we don't need to go into that now. So that holds three kegs of my three 20 litre kegs of, um, of Three Rivers Three Rivers craft beer. Um, we've got a bottle of CO2 in there as well, so we can serve it under pressure and keep it carbonated nicely. This is my little blackboard that tells me what's on tap at the bar at any given time, because there's three taps; they all look the same. I tend to forget. 
Um, and if you want to maybe come over here again, this is one of the inspirations for the Three Rivers Brewery. Obviously we're the, we're the Rivers family, that's a big part of it. Um, but um, Trina, my partner, she's a Pittsburgh girl from the States and this is a photo of Pittsburgh, which is also called the Three Rivers City. So they're the three rivers that make up Pittsburgh and we're based down in the lovely Peel region near Mandura. And we also have these three rivers. We've got the Murray River, the Serpentine and the Harvey River. So the whole Three Rivers concept seemed to make sense on a, for a number of different reasons. But yeah, so that, that, that's Pittsburgh and we, we drink to Pittsburgh regularly. Cheers Gary. Cheers. Welcome to the bar. Welcome to the um, what's currently the Three Rivers Brewery. Um, really, it's my shed, um, but it, things are going to get a little bit bigger than this. Um, so yeah, this is the setup that I've currently got to produce my 40 to 60 litre batches of beer. Um, I'm an all grain brewer, which means that um, none of this kit and kilo stuff that people normally do with homebrew. I get bags of grain and develop a, a recipe and a formula for all the different grains that I use. Um, mill them all up, um, put them in my mash tun which is this big blue esky, but now it's been used by me, it's not an esky anymore, it's my mash tun. Uh, and then go through the very traditional um, brewing process to, to get some good um, handcrafted beers out of it. Thanks for watching the first episode of Brew TV. Tune in next week for more on beer and brewing in Western Australia. And remember, drink safe. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.